this is the new OnePlus Pad Go and uh, we've been using this for a while and I have to say that the tablets are becoming more and more popular in India and just go a couple of years back people were not buying Android tablets they completely stopped in sales and companies had stopped manufacturing them then suddenly we see a boom of tablets and this one I have to say is surprisingly good and it is performing a lot better as far as usability goes and as far as the display is concerned than uh, the previous OnePlus tab which the display I didn't really like but this one uh, looks really good. So let's quickly talk about this and uh, talk about what is great about it but first let's discuss the price. So if you just get the Wi-Fi variant which if you do have a OnePlus phone you can't share 5G data with it so you don't really need a SIM in this. So if you get a Wi-Fi only variant uh, that costs 19,999. It's available for pre-order right now. You can book it and you will be able to save a lot of money on this as well. Get some offers and deals from banks. Uh, you can avail those as well. And uh, then if you get the LTE variant, you have to pay a thousand rupees extra, but then you also have a storage option. So typically it has eight gigabyte of RAM and 128 gigabyte of storage, but you can get the higher variant with eight gigabyte of RAM, 256 gigabyte of storage and LTE capabilities for around 24,000 rupees. But this also supports micro SD card expansion. So I would say you get the lower variant and then pop in a micro SD card because you can go up to one terabyte as far as storage is concerned. So you don't really need the higher variant because the RAM is the same. So unless you want to keep storage on the, on the not iPad, OnePlus Pad Go, uh, you can do that. As far as the display is concerned, it's a really nice uh, display. Uh, it's an LCD. It's a 2K resolution display. You've got 90 hertz of refresh rate, which is nice for a large screen like this. 120 hertz, ideal of course, but 90 hertz is also good, we're not complaining. Uh, like you can see, this is the SIM variant, so you can make phone calls with this and uh, you can also send and receive SMSs. So that works functionality wise. Uh, you don't have 5G, you only have LTE, so 4G. So as far as the unboxing experience is concerned, it is as you would expect, you get uh, the pad itself, you also get a cable, a 33 watt Superbook charger is included in the box. You also get a SIM ejector tool if you get the LTE variant, some documentation, and that's about it. As far as the design is concerned, you've got rounded off edges. It's actually very comfortable to hold in the hand. You also have a front facing camera over here. It's an eight megapixel camera. On the back is also a single camera, despite there being a pretty big camera bump. There's a single camera and that too is an 8 megapixel camera. You do have quite a lot of bezels around the front but they're not bad and they're symmetrical so they don't look that bad especially if you have a large screen like this. Having some dead space around the screen to sort of hold your pad or your tablet is not a bad thing to do especially if you're holding it like this the way I am with your thumbs touching the edges. Bezels are good because they create dead zones so you're not tapping on apps or things. You you also have uh, the OS which is optimized now for tablets. They've experimented with this for quite a lot and you do have this quick access panel over here which does allow you to uh, get access to your recent files and images and documents and things like that. Uh, that you can sort of push away when you don't need it. So you can also do split screen. So if you hold up the app over here, uh, you can split screen it. And so it'll pop up over there and then you can choose a second app to open in the split screen and that works flawlessly. Of course, you can move this around and readjust the size, uh, which also works quite fluidly. You can also get a floating window or a picture in picture sort of a design over here, which you can then move around and adjust on the screen as per your requirements. And then you can also increase the size of this uh, and place it wherever. Some apps will work uh, flawlessly with this, some apps will not. So if you're planning on doing this with YouTube without paying for YouTube premium, that will not work. We tried it, trust me. The UI is also designed typically like OnePlus's UI. So you do have uh, this widget shelf over here. And then if you pull down from the top, you do get your notification panel. And uh, then you do have uh, these tiles which can be adjusted and uh, your quick actions. So. If I quickly go into edit tiles over here, you can see that uh, you have a lot of space to edit the tiles and you have a lot of options to choose from. So you can remove or add additional tiles into this area for quick access, which is great. If we talk a little bit more about the display, uh, this is an 11.35 inch display. So it's a fairly large display. You have a 2408 by 1720 pixel resolution with a 90 Hertz of refresh rate. The touch sampling is also almost double. So you get 180 Hertz of touch sampling. The display has a peak brightness of 400 nits, uh, which is not the greatest, but if you're using it indoors, 400 nits is pretty common 
In fact, some laptops, most laptops have 300 nits of brightness. So 400 nits on a tablet is pretty good. Not the best, but good. Apart from the 8 gigabyte of RAM and 128 or 256 gigabyte of storage that you can choose from, like I mentioned, you do have expansion via micro SD. And powering everything is a MediaTek Helio G99 processor, which is quite capable in itself. Uh, we'll pop up the benchmarks on the screen right now. And you can see some of these gaming samples as well. It manages to hold up on its own and it works really well. What's also impressive are the speakers. They do support Dolby Atmos. You do have four cutouts, so two on each side, and they give you a really good stereo sound. Uh, the speakers are loud, and they also have a lot of depth in them, so they just don't sound like loud, tinny speakers. They sound like good quality speakers. And for the price, you're actually getting quite a lot in uh, this tablet. I'm actually quite really impressed uh, with uh, the overall functionality and the fluidity of the operating system. And uh, OnePlus is also guaranteeing several years of software updates as well as security updates on the tab. The battery on the inside is an 8000 milliamp hour battery which should easily last you a couple of days if not more. Uh, we've been using this non-stop and our battery has been excellent as far as uh, that is concerned. Um, we went through a whole day of using the tab and uh, you know opening apps and even shooting with it to have about 50% battery left at the end of the day. So if you're using it as a regular user, you'll probably get a few days of usage on uh, this tablet. We are really impressed with this. It's actually a really good budget option in uh, the market and uh, with offers and deals, if you can get it for around 15, 16,000 rupees for just the Wi-Fi only variant, it'll be a compelling device in uh, this price bracket uh, with not a lot of competition. Uh, with the kind of display that it has. And this also manages color really well. It has great viewing angles and it also has a true tone-esque uh, display. So it automatically detects uh, the light and the color in uh, the light and adjusts the screen based on that. So you'll see it switch between a cool and warm on its own, depending on what kind of light you are in. So overall, we are really impressed. If you have any questions or queries about the OnePlus Pad Go, let us know in the comment section below. As far as content is concerned, this does support Wildwine L1, so you can stream directly on this uh, from any of your favorite streaming apps as well. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button. This has been Bharat. I'll see you guys in the next one.